Hello and welcome. This is Jennifer McGuire, and I hope your week is off to a good start. Today, I am sharing with you some ideas for creating two-for-one cards. This is where you create one main focal point and you split it in half to create two cards. I've done a video with this technique in the past. I'll link to it here at the top right if you want to check it out. But today, I have fresh new ideas for it and other ways to approach the technique. Now I'll be using floral images today. I use florals a lot because I just love them. I'm drawn to them. But you could do this dot design with just leaves or you could use hearts or stars or any other large image you may have. A damask would even be beautiful too. Let's start with these two cards. For them, I use the Altenew Airbrushed Flower Stamp Set. This is a new one. It's beautiful because it has the outline image, so you could use that with coloring. And then it also has the layers you can stamp in the center. And some of the layers have like a dotted feel to it to give an airbrush look, and I'll build on that later. There's also a coordinating die set and mask stencil set that goes with it that's available, and I'll use those too. So this is the little guide that comes with the stamp set. It shows you how to do the layering and it also has some card design ideas in the inside. I always encourage looking at those because they can be really inspiring on different ways to use the product. So let's start by doing some stamping. I wanted to show you how I stamped a bunch of these very quickly. I'm using my Misty stamping tool. Any stamping tool would work. You could use an acrylic block if you prefer. I like to use the stamping tool so I can stamp a lot at once. So I have a piece of cardstock in here that is five and a half by eight and a half. And I have positioned some of the outline stamps towards the top of my paper. I'm stamping there in black ink, and then I'm rotating and stamping again in black ink. This allows me to fill this paper and max out how much I stamp on it. That little white thing that I'm rubbing across it is an eraser for a dry erase board. It just is something that I can hold on and rub across the stamping tool to make sure I get good transfer of the ink. Anything would work and your hand is perfect for it. I just find this easier. Okay, so now I'm just stamping a few extra leaves in those open areas. By stamping once and rotating and stamping again, I save a lot of time in doing multiple images. Now that I've done the outline, I can use the layering images. So once you line it up on one flower, remember you just stamp it, turn it, and stamp it again. And to save time, I'm lining up two images for the two flowers so I can do them both at once. I'll be using Altenew inks. This is sea glass, and then I'll be using ocean waves after that. Now I haven't used these stamps, so I want to prepare them. What I do is I take a dry cloth and rub along the surface of the stamp. So the one on the left I've done, the one on the right I haven't. When you've done the dry cloth on the surface of a new stamp, it goes from shiny to cloudy. So let me show you. On this stamp on the right, I'm just going to wipe right down the center only. And you'll see it's cloudy there, but shiny next to it. It's kind of hard to see in the video, but in real life it's very obvious. So we want to have kind of a cloudy look on the surface of our stamp before we stamp it the first time. I only do that the first time I use a stamp. So I'm using the sea glass ink, inking up both of the stamps, and this will stamp beautifully. If I wouldn't have wiped it with a dry cloth first, I find that you sometimes get bubbling with your inking and not good coverage. Okay, so after I've stamped that, I can rotate and stamp it again. Now this is a very light ink color. I started with the lightest ink first. I wanted to have very soft flowers for this particular card, but you could use darker colors if you prefer. Now I'm coming in with the second layer for both of my flowers. Again, stamping them both at once to save time. I first wipe them with a dry cloth. I use a micro cloth, but you could really use any dry cloth you have, as long as it doesn't leave lint behind. Now this layer kind of has a dotted effect to it that's really beautiful. I'll give you a closer look in a bit. Now I could leave these flowers as is, but I decided to use the masking stencil too. So this masking stencil lines up right with the outside edge of the stamped image, perfectly up against it. And I am taping off the other areas so I can apply a super soft amount of blue ink over the whole flower. Now I'm using the same sea glass and I'm using an Altenew ink blending tool and just putting a light amount of ink down. What's cool is you could put glitter paste over the entire completed flower. And I wish I had done that, I'll do that next time. 
Or you could press Versamark ink and then put embossing powder on that, maybe like a clear sparkle embossing powder, and that would cover the entire flower. So that's one of the advantages of masking stencils. But here I just added a soft blue over the entire flower to kind of pull it all together. For the leaves, I used two green colors. We have uh, Altenew Firefly and Altenew Grassfield. I use those two quite a bit. Now I'm going to zoom through the stamping of the leaves because it's the same thing as the flowers. I stamp with the lightest color first, rotate, stamp it again, and then we move on to the second layer with the darker color. I also did the center of the flowers using Altenew buttercream and paper, paper bag inks. So it has like a dark yellow look to the center. Now after I do my stamping, sometimes I like to go in with a marker and add a little bit of darkness into the nooks and crannies of the stamped image. That's a tip that I got from Kathy Rakusen at The Daily Marker. I'll link to her here. By going in and putting a little bit of dark color in the nooks and crannies, it really makes your final image pop, especially when you have soft images like these blue flowers. So I'm putting, in this case, I'm doing dots because that stamp set has like that dot stamped look to it. You could also just do little lines or just a little area of coloring, whatever kind of goes with the style of stamp you used. So you can see the flower on the left, I did the dots too. The flower on the right is plain. I apologize, it's hard to see that in the lighting of my video, but in real life, the flower on the left really does pop quite a bit more. Okay, so after I had all of my flowers and leaves completed, it's time to do that split card technique that allows you to create two cards at once. So I just have a strip of cardstock here that is five and a half inches long and about an inch and a quarter wide. I am just laying my flowers and leaves onto that cardstock. I'm not adhering it right now. That's because I want to move it around and try to get an arrangement where the flowers are kind of equally on the left side and on the right side. You could put adhesive down and just stick the flowers down if you trust yourself more than I trust me, but I wanted to kind of get the position just right. So you can see how some of the flowers kind of lean to the left, some kind of lean to the right, and I have leaves coming out both sides. So I just hold them as I tuck more in place. Once I've covered that entire piece of white cardstock in the background, I will then put a piece of masking paper or masking tape over the entire piece. You could use press and seal also if you want to. And that will hold all of those pieces together in that position. That way I don't have to try to recreate this little cluster that I've done. I then can pick up the entire cluster, flip it over, and then put some strong adhesive onto our cardstock scrap. I'm using double-sided tape, but liquid adhesive would work too. I'll now place this on the back of our flower cluster, right down the center, and then press very firmly so that all of the leaves and flowers attach. If some don't attach it completely, that's okay. I can go back and add some liquid adhesive under those pieces later on. Now we can remove that tape, save it for another project, and now we have a flower cluster that we can cut in half for two cards. Now to cut that in half, you could just eyeball it from the front, but I just flip it over and cut right down the center of that cardstock strip. And now we have two pieces for two cards. Now that little flower fell off, so I'll just use a little bit of adhesive to put it back in place. I wanted to keep this card soft, so I kept the background white. Now I thought it'd be fun to add a little interest, some texture, so I'm using the Altenew Swirl Motif Embossing Folder. This is a new one that does a 3D embossed border. So I'm positioning a piece of white cardstock in there so that the border will stick out from my floral border. I'm running this through my die cut machine. Any die cut machine would work with these embossing folders. And this will give me some texture to add to the front of my card. By the way, this piece is four and a quarter by five and a half, and it is a nice heavyweight white cardstock, which gives beautiful results with an embossing folder. Now I'll use some Gina K Connect liquid adhesive and put that on the back of our floral cluster and put it right against the edge of the card. You could put a little cardstock border along the edge if you want to, but I just decided to put the flowers right there and then we can flip it over and trim off the excess. And now we have a, a card front with that split furl design and that embossing folder texture in the background. And now I can do the same with another card panel for our second card. 
I also had some extra little leaves and I don't like those to go to waste. So even the tiniest little bits, I can glue and tuck in coming out from the flowers. You can even tear pieces in half and get two little bits of leaves sticking out in two different places. So use up all of those bits and pieces to fill in the flower cluster on both of your cards. Let's finish off the first of the two cards. On this one, I used alphabet letters and I have some tips for you. So I'm using the Altenew Fine Alphabet die set and I cut the words or the word miss from black cardstock. The black cardstock that I like to use for die cut letters and sentiments is from Tim Holtz. It's his black alcohol ink cardstock with a matte finish. The reason I choose to use that for my die cut letters and sentiments is it's got a beautiful smooth finish to it and it is super dark black. I treasure that cardstock and it works great for those bold black sentiments. So I die cut the letters for Miss three times and glued them together for a stacked look. For the word you, I use the new all to new simple greetings die set. This has the words thanks, hugs, hello, and you. And it includes the shadow dies for each of those words. I decided to use the you for this card and I'll use the thanks on the next one. Since this U die is super tiny, I thought it would be helpful to put an Altenew adhesive sheet on the back of my black cardstock before I die cut. I'll be die cutting three of the word U and stacking them together for dimension. So I have a little piece of my Tim Holtz alcohol ink black cardstock and I'm putting it right on the edge of this scrap of Altenew adhesive sheet. And then I trim off the excess. That way I can really maximize using this adhesive sheet and this cardstock. This adhesive sheet, I highly recommend for die cutting. It holds beautifully, it's easy to work with, it die cuts very easily, and I like that the release paper has a print on it so it's very clear that your adhesive is on there. Okay, so that little U die there, I'll die cut three times from that black cardstock that has the adhesive on the back. Now that we have Miss and You done, it's time to arrange those on our card. I want to get the spacing just right for the letters of the word Miss, so I have a sticky mat here that I'm arranging the letters on. There's no adhesive on the back of the letters, it's just on the sticky mat to hold it in place. Once I have the letters spaced out just how I want, I can take a piece of masking tape, the same one I used before, place it on there to pick up all the letters. I can now flip it over and add some liquid adhesive on the back of it. I could have used the Altenew adhesive sheet, didn't think of it at the time. But now I can place this onto my card, making sure it's straight, and leave the tape on there as it dries. While that dries, I'm adding the U die cuts. Now these have the adhesive on the back, so they're easy to add. Once I have it positioned, I use a bone folder to press that down so the adhesive sticks. I then can add the other two layers of the word you, so that has as much dimension as the word miss. We'll come back to that card, but let's go ahead and finish the second card of this pair. On this one, I have a sentiment strip that is from the new Altenew Block Sentiment Stamp Set. I like that there are reverse images in here. So the text is white and the area around it is whatever color you stamp it. Now this has a guide with it and I really like one of the images in here and I didn't use it today but I wanted to show you. You see the one that says this too shall pass? It goes beautifully in the center of a card or up on the top corner. Today I'm just using one of the reverse sentiment strips. So I'm stamping it along the edge of a piece of white cardstock with black ink. This will give me a black sentiment with white text instead of having to white heat emboss on black cardstock. I like to double stamp that just to make sure that it's nice and crisp and black. Now I can use my trimmer to cut the sentiment strip down and there we have the perfect sentiment strip for our card. Now for a sentiment I use one of my most used dies of all time, it's the Altenew Fancy Hello die. I cut that three times from the Tim Holtz Alcohol Ink Black cardstock that had Altenew adhesive uh, sheet on the back. So the adhesive's already on them. That makes it really easy to line up these intricate dies and then add them to the card. So these are three layers thick. You can totally skip the dimension. I always go overboard with dimension because I like the final look, but it's totally up to you how you do it on your card. I do like to use that bone folder to press those layers together anytime I use an adhesive sheet with die cutting. To finish off that card, I just glued the sentiments onto the card 
over the fun dimension. And then on both cards, I added some Studio Katia uh, Bora Bora pearls. They're like a pool color. They're just beautiful. So it's hard to see in the video lighting. I'll tilt it here so you can see it better. But there's that fun texture in the background thanks to that embossing folder that makes a big difference on this soft card. Also by using bold black sentiments, it really makes it pop. There you can see the dot detail that I added with the markers, any markers would work, even colored pencils, and that texture. So by creating just a handful of images, arranging them once and cutting down the middle, I was able to create two cards pretty quickly. I think it'd be fun to do a set of note cards where there are a bunch of pairs in different colors. So you have a pair of blue flowers, pair of yellow, pair of pink, and give that as a gift. Okay, let's move on to our next pair of two for one split cards. In this case, I did a unique design on the bottom of one of my cards, and I wanted to share that tip with you. For these cards, I use the new Alta New Vintage Garden stamp set. This has really nice, large images with fine line detail to it. This would be beautiful for watercolor or coloring with markers. I'm not great at doing that, so today I'll just do some basic blue stamping and inking. I'm a big fan of large images that fill cards nicely. And what's fun is there's super tiny sentiments that go along with it that you can use on other cards too. There are also coordinating dies available to go with it and these coloring stencils. These allow you to add some shading to the inside of the flowers. Whereas the last stencils I used were masking stencils that went around the outside edge. So I've placed into my Misty stamping tool as many of the images as I could. In fact, I fit them all and I'll stamp them all at once. You could do black ink and do some coloring. I wanted to avoid that since it's not something that I really enjoy and am good at. So instead I'm stamping with Altenew Eastern Sky Blue ink and we'll just do some blue tone on tone flowers for a different look. I will then use the coordinating dies to cut them out. I probably should have done the stencil inking first, but I didn't think of it at the time. But I thought I'd show you this and it works just fine. Now I have lined up one of the coloring stencils with the flower and over it I'm applying the same color of ink with an inking tool, but a light amount. And this will just add some uh, filling, some coloring into it, some shading, and look at that beautiful result. It reminds me of the pottery that my grandma used to collect. Then I will do the same thing with the leaves. Since I had already die cut my stamped images, I had to kind of tape them on the back of the stencil, but it worked just fine. And it actually was a bit beneficial because I didn't have to mask off the other areas of the stencil as I did my inking. So it worked out well. Okay, once I'm done with those, I'm just taking the largest image. It's huge, it stretches across the card, and I'm going to cut that right down the center. I actually cut it off center a bit, so one side of the flower cluster was bigger than the other, just for the design that I plan to do. Let's start with the first of the pair of cards. On this one, I wanted to show you how I created that white background. I used the new all to new grid cover die, and I die cut it from white cardstock. I sprayed the back of that die cut with E6000 spray adhesive and adhered it to my card at an angle. So this is white on white, my note card is four and a quarter by five and a half inches. I will later die cut two more and glue them on top for a lot of dimension, but you could leave it as one if you want. I think this die would be so much fun to use with a weaving. You could cut thin cardstock strips in whatever colors and do a weaving through that grid. You could also do a die cut inlay, but here, I'm just building up some texture for a white on white background. I also think it would be fun to put a gem in each of those little openings. I'll have to try those ideas. Now for sentiments on these two, these two cards, both in the pair, I use the Altenu Flower Vine stamp set. This is an older one that I use quite often because of the small and simple sentiments included. Off screen, I white heat embossed one of these sentiments along the edge of a wide blue cardstock strip. I'm putting adhesive on the back of the strip and lining it up along the edge of our grid die cut on our note card. I also put pieces of foam tape on the back of our smaller split flower cluster, and then I will tuck that underneath that blue cardstock border. I like having that bright blue border to stand out on our soft background. 
To make it pop even more, I'm putting down my T ruler, putting a line of adhesive against it, and then pushing onto that a navy cardstock strip that's very thin. That way I can be assured it's straight by using the edge of the T ruler. Next I have a thanks die cut that's three cardstock layers thick, glued those together, and now I'm gluing them right along the border. So this is from navy cardstock also. So I skipped black, I usually do black for sentiments, but sometimes a dark color on a soft background is all you need. Okay, let's next move on to the second card, and I have this fun cut border on the front of the card. I like doing designs like this because they're unexpected. But I first had a different plan. So I have the other half of our split flower cluster, and I'm gluing it towards the bottom of a four and a quarter by five and a half inch top folding white note card. And I did it at an angle. I love doing angle designs. You just want to make sure that the bottom of your flower there lines up with the bottom of the note card. Then towards the top of the card, I have three die cuts of the grid that I die cut from white and layered together, and I'll glue that and then trim off the excess, just like we did on the last one. Now for a sentiment on this one, I decided to use an alphabet die set, one that I use often. This is the Altenew Simple Alphabet Die Set. I like that it's small and has a soft look to it. I die cut the word hello from this using navy cardstock. Next, I have a white cardstock uh, scrap here, and right along the edge, I'm putting a thin navy cardstock strip. I tell you, I like doing those thin strips. They may be a little bit of a hassle to get straight, but it's definitely worth it to make your design pop. Underneath that, I have a blue sentiment strip where I stamped and white heat embossed a sentiment, and then a wider light blue strip where I added the word hello. I now then can cut off the excess white and we have a border to add to our card. It was easier to add all of those border strips onto one white cardstock backing and then add it to the card. I'm putting some double-sided foam tape right along the edge of our layered grid background die cuts, and then I can lay this border right along that. After trimming off the excess, I noticed I had these little leaves left over. So I decided to add those in there too. So I just kind of tucked them to be coming out from the border. So we have flowers and leaves kind of layered together. Originally, I thought I wanted the entire bottom of the card, the front and the back, to be cut along the flower edge. So I'm cutting all of the card, the front and the back, right along the edge of those flower die cuts. That way, the entire bottom of the card would have that decorative edge. But after I cut it out, I decided I didn't like that. You could leave it like that if you want to, but at the angle, I didn't think it worked well. If I would have done it straight, it would have worked better. And then the card would have been able to stand on its own and so on. So I just changed my mind. Mid-course, I wasn't going to start over. Instead, I just cut the back off of this so that I could add the front onto another card and then have a second chance at it. So on that whole card panel, I'm putting liquid adhesive and gluing it onto a new white note card that is four and a quarter by five and a half. Then I'm cutting just the front of the card. So the back of the card is staying whole, but the front of the card will have that decorative cut. There are ways that would have been easier to do that had I had that idea originally, but I changed course and had to make it work. Okay, here are the two completed cards. I just added some soft blue pearls from Lucy's cards for a little bit of added interest. So you can see how that white grid background looks really cool on the bottom half of the card. So much dimension from that. Then we have our cluster of flowers that we cut in half. So we were able to cre create two cards at once. I especially like how the front of this card has that decorative edge to it. Okay, let's move on to my third and final pair of cards for this video. Once again, I kind of changed my mind as I was creating, which I'll share with you. I originally wanted to have a bunch of flowers going horizontally in a cluster and then cut them in half for two cards, but I changed my mind. I use the Altenew Spotted Orchid stamp set. This is definitely going to be a favorite of mine for this year. The detail in it is beautiful. Now, I know the way that I made my flowers in the vase isn't really how an orchid would look. Normally, it would have the stem and be in a pot, but it's the way I went, and I thought it turned out okay anyways. I really like the different card designs included in this idea guide. 
and there are coordinating dies available too. I decided to go with some bright pink flowers, so I have baby pink, fuchsia, and magenta inks from Altenew. I'm doing the lightest first and stamping that. I have no outline, there's no outline for this image. It's all built up layers, and thankfully, due to the unique shape of the orchid, they're very easy to line up. Once again, I'm stamping multiple images. I originally thought I would do a big cluster, but I ended up only needing two in the end. You'll see me double stamp my lightest ink just to make it a little bit darker. I chose a soft color for the first layer of the leaves and the flowers, but then decided I wanted it to be brighter, so I just double stamped. But the other layers, as you can see, I'm only doing one stamping. And look at the detail that starts to build up. And again, you can see it's really easy to line up thanks to the shape. I'm gonna skip a little bit ahead here just to save some time, but I built up all the layers and then the final layer for the dots in the center of the flower I did in black ink. Such beautiful results, definitely a favorite layering set of mine. Now on this card I also used vases. This is the Altenew Versatile Vases 2 stamp set. It's a great one to have if you do a lot of flower images. So I started with two pieces of white cardstock. They were pieces I had, so I just decided to use them. They're three and a half inches wide and they are eight and a half inches tall. And I'm putting them up together in my Misty stamping tool. You could start with one piece if you wanted to. I had these ready to go. I'm not sure what size card I'm gonna do yet. I'm just going with it. Right along the um, edge, where the two pieces of cardstock meet, I'm lining up one of the vases. So the uh, cut edge is right down the center of the vase and I'm stamping that with black ink. By the way, there are mask stencils available for these vases if you want to fill the inside with like a soft blue or whatever. I decided to leave mine as is. Now I will take a stem stamp. I wanna have a stem leading up to my orchid, so I'm using this Altenew stamp set that I've used before in videos, the Columbine, but I just dug through my stamp set to find that stem. If you do not have one, you could always just draw your stem with a marker. So I have this long image, and I'm kind of bending it in my stamping tool so it arches one way on one card and the other way on the other. I'm stamping it once with green ink and then just towards the bottom of the image with a slightly darker green ink. So there you can see I'm kind of arching it the opposite way for the other card. I really like that long images can be changed like this. Okay, so now I have the stems on the two card panels right up against the edge. I like that look of the vase cut along the edge. To finish these cards, I added the little flower at the top of the stem and also added a few of the leaves that I stamped and die cut. I trimmed down my white panel. I stamped with deepest sympathy from that same Columbine stamp set that I used for the stems. I then added those to pink note cards and I just made these whatever size I wanted, the flowers hanging off the edge. So I need to come up with an envelope that fit this. So I have a five by seven envelope here. This card is a little bit shorter than seven inches and it's about four inches wide. So it works in a five by seven envelope, but I thought I'd make the envelope a little bit shorter so that it fits even better. So I have my envelope in here and I'm cutting about three quarters of an inch off the bottom of the envelope. This is an easy way to make a custom size envelope. And I did that with the second one for the other card too. Then to reseal the bottom of the envelopes, I just run a little bit of liquid adhesive, something strong, along that cut edge on the inside. You could also put double-sided tape in there, but I find this to be easier. Now I have an envelope that fits my card better. Again, the cards are about four by seven inches, and I started with a five by seven inch envelope. Okay, so now we have custom envelopes that fit this perfectly. Now again, I know that an orchid isn't normally in a vase quite like this, but I thought there was something fun and unique about the card design, so I went with it. I decided not to add any embellishments, but just leave the cards as is, so they're not too thick. I only have the dimension of the white panel on the front, the white cardstock piece on the inside for my sentiment, and the added die cuts. So here, the split is the vase. So it's fun because I can have the vase split, but then have the cards kind of hang off. So that's another way to do a split card design. 
All right, there you have some new ideas for two for one cards. If you're interested in the supplies I use, they're linked below in my YouTube description, but I'm thinking you probably have some products on hand that might work for this split card technique. If you are interested in another split card video, I will link it here at the end in the middle. I'll also link my blog on the top right so you can go see more about these different cards. Thanks so much for watching. I'll be back with another video soon and you have a wonderful week.